just want to thank the three of you that decided to, to come on such uh, short notice. Um, I know there's been lots of speculation out there, some uh, strange flights in and out of Turkey during training camp, and uh, I'm here to announce that I am moving to a new club. Uh, in the Bundesliga, we'll be taking over at Kaiserslautern. Um, I want to thank Mr. Morofsky and the board and the opportunity they gave me here at Honig Zanke. I think we've done some great things. Uh, we were well in the red financially when I joined, and we are doing quite well now. Looks like we're going to stay up this season in the uh, Lotto Extra Classa. And I think we got some good things going on here. Um, but it's really a big opportunity, so I won't be taking any questions today. Uh, but thank you for your time. Thanks for being here on such short notice. And uh, yeah, go Red Devils. Hello there, and welcome to Quite the Change. Um, this is really unexpected from this journeyman save. Wasn't expecting to make this type of a jump. So let me kind of walk you through how we got to FC Kaiserslautern, which I hope is how you say it. I've listened to it several times. So remember that episode was like an episode or two ago where I, I accidentally clicked, you know, I, my name was in the mix. Um, what was the team with a KGHM? I was in the mix. Like I, I told the press, Hey, like it's, it's nice to be mentioned, but I want to improve, which I thought was like an honest answer. Like, it, it is nice to be mentioned. And, I thought I still wanted to improve. And they were like, they're, you know, down in 13th. They're battling relegation. And Honig Sank is up here in 8th place. So, like, they'd really have to pay extraordinarily well for that for that move to make sense for me, right? But I was trying to use that as leverage with the board to go get training facilities since Honig Sanka's phone, uh, training facilities are, are, whatever, below average. Um, so I showed you in the episode there that I was also suddenly in the mix for Slesk or whatever you say that. Again, relegation trying to avoid relegation i was just like eh, i don't know if I, like we just came from the first division we're doing quite well like we're exceeding expectations i'd love to just stay put but use again this as leverage to like go get me some some uh training facilities um but they just kept saying no on the training facilities you know they they noticed i was interviewing and they said and i was like hey yeah i'd love to sit down with you but i gotta have training facilities and they were like, sorry. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to just say, like, I, I can't stay. You know, I want to stay, but, like, I can't go into contract talks with you if I don't have that. And they were like, fine. Um, so once that <laughs> happened, <laughs> let me just show you. Um, this is this is the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we had teams all over the place. Once I took those two interviews, started coming at me. So Ipswich Town, who's they're, they're in dead last in the championship. They're about to get relegated. Uh, v VVV Vimlo in the Eredivisie. Well, I can't, where are they? They're towards the bottom. They came at me. Yeah, they're, they're fighting relegation too. Um, I don't even know how you say this one. It's the Jupiter League, which is the league below the Eredivisie. Zurich, Zurich, sorry, which is in the Swiss Super League. Uh, Alcoron, which is Spanish second division. Chavez, which is Portuguese Premier, Zora Lagan, Ukrainian Premier, all these teams are coming at me. And in comes uh, Kaiserslautern, which I'd never actually heard of them because in real life, <clears throat> they're in, sorry, let's break the mold from being in like the save world, right? They're in the second Bundesliga and they're like not doing well. Like they're. There's a bunch of teams kind of at the bottom, and they're fighting like to not go down to the third division. That would be very bad. But in this world, um, they're in the Bundesliga. And I was like, no way. There's no way they want to offer me. Like all the other teams that I interviewed with, you know, their leagues were paying managers 2,000, 3,000 pounds a week, except obviously the championship, which was like there were some crazy, crazy numbers in the championship. Um, uh, like I, I was just looking at it like, hey, if it was actually me, if a team for the Bundesliga or the championship came at me, yeah, I'd interview with them. Like, even just to get that income for a half of a season would be more money than I'd make in a whole year at Honig Zank. I'm making a thousand a week, and so I interviewed, 
and they wanted some things, right? They want to play direct soccer. They want to play attacking soccer. They want to sign youth players for the first team, and they want to sign or they want to develop players through the youth system as well. And I said I could do all that. We'll see how that goes. But I was just like, yeah, sure. Like, because I did, like, I figured that was my only chance at getting the interview or getting the job. And then they kind of hung around, and I took these some other interviews like I was interviewing everywhere I was like hey if I'm gonna interview let's go interview right and then they came back and offered me the job um and so let's just <laughs> remember I was like a thousand a week at Honig Zanko in the 17th best league in the world so now we're in the Bundesliga which I don't you know there's licensing issues they don't have it loaded in here but now we're, we've gone from the 17th to the 4th not bad. As you'll notice, Kaiser Slaughter's in 10th place. You know, and, and the teams in the relegation zone are 12 points behind us, right? Um, expectation at the beginning of the season, we'd get relegated. So we're, we're, I feel like I'm walking into a good situation, right? Like you're, they're supposed to be getting relegated, and they're actually in 10th place. The board wants me to avoid a relegation battle, which I'm going to take as be in 15th or 16th or 14th. Like don't be down here trying to avoid relegation, like just straight up avoid it. I figured we're 12 points clear with 17 games to play. Pretty good deal. Pretty good deal to walk into, but uh, okay. Well, so let's just look at the contract. Yeah. Yeah. 8,000 8, pounds a week. That's eight times what I was making in Poland. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt like I, I, no one turns that down. Even if I get fired at the end season, I'm not turning down 8,000 a week. That's that's eight weeks, right? For every every week, I it's like eight weeks in Poland for every week I work. I'm just saying. I'm just saying I had to take it. I had to take it. So here we are with one of the best logos in the Bundesliga. No comment. Um... I do want to say, Honig Zaga, we had done a good job. We were up to like 608,000 pounds in the bank. And if you remember way back when, if you don't know, go back and watch the season. Like, stop watching now. We were at negative 450,000 pounds. So we've done over a million dollar turnover there, or turnaround. Got them in a good spot. They wouldn't give me the training facilities, but they've got some good young players coming in, which we may poach one or two. Um, no comment. Don't, don't, shh, don't, don't tell them about that. Um, but... Uh, we got to put our uh, our big boy pants on right now because we're at 21 million in the bank. That is crazy talk. Like that's crazy talk. Um transfer budgets 7 million, 510,000 on payroll. Like is there like one week of payroll is essentially the entire club of Honigsaka in one week, just like that. Um even though we're spending 386. So maybe we get 2 weeks, okay? So kind of a big job to step into. But again, all the other teams I was looking at were kind of battling relegation. And this team, in theory, should be battling relegation, <laughs> which may turn out bad for us. But we are 12 points clear with a negative seven goal differential. That's aggressive. Um, so let's take a look at the squad. Let's see what we're looking at here. I don't know why my nose is itching. Um so they've done all right, right? Seven, three, and seven. Um, the only problem, if you'll notice already, it's highlighted. Yeah, our first game. Yeah, yeah, it's against good old Bayern Munich. And we get to play them twice in the back half of the season. Why? Why Why didn't we play them once in the first half? No one has an answer for me. So tough run of games playing Bayern and Augsburg 12th, 16th, and then Dortmund's hanging out in sixth. So let's take a, we should take, let's take a look at how we got here first, okay? Uh, let's go to the stages. All right. So last season, they're up in the Bundesliga, 14th place. They survived 36 points, five points clear. Let's get like 28 million pounds, 28 million pounds in prize money, which is just crazy talk. Um, the season before that, you'll notice they were absent because they got relegated in 2017, 2018 um, by quite a lot, 14 points. And... They weren't there in 2016, 17, just like they're not actually in real life. So, but if you go down to the second division here, um, let's go back. So they won promotion 
1617. Okay, so they go up. Then they come back, right? They got re-relegated and they go right back up. So like they've kind of bounced in and out, um, which is why I'm assuming that the, the media assumed that that's what they were going to do again this, se this season. So the fact that they're 24 points on 17 games, 10th place, they're ahead of Red uh, Rosenbull Leipzig, right? And, and and the reason the coaching opening was open it, is because Leipzig fired their coach and Kaiser Schlarten's coach went there and took the fitness coach and the goalkeeping coach and all that. So we got vacancies in the coaching staff. I mean, we, we got four coaches missing. We got, look at all these scouts gone. Medical is like kind of a crazy situation to be walking into. But that's where we're at. Um, but yeah, the lowest they've been is 14. So they've not been down in that relegation zone the entire season. We're just going to try and, you know, make sure we don't do that as well. Um, interesting thing, though, is that they play a, they've been playing a 4-4-2 and a 4-2-3-1, which is not what we're playing in the last two clubs. And I'm not super familiar with it. Um, that represents a relative problem because it is the 27th of January back up here, right? It's Sunday and less than a week from now. All right. No, right. But we're down here, right? Big, ignore that. I should cut that, but I'm not going to, uh, it's the 27th and on February 1st, the transfer window closes. So I don't have a ton of time. Like I don't have enough time to go scout people and like completely change the tactic and whatever. So we're going <laughs> to have to learn how to make a four, four, two or four, two, three, one or something like that work. Again, we're just trying to survive and not get into a relegation fight while also playing attacking soccer and direct soccer. So we'll get to that. Um, so in terms of appearances, I've got to listed that way. We've got actually, let's just look at, at the, let's look at my position. Raphael Wolf is going to be our goalkeeper. Looks He looks all right. Uh, valued at 1.8 million. First teamer. Not fantastic. Not terrible. But he's played quite well this season. So we're going to go with him. Um, but Ju Julian uh, Potersbeck is our backup. He's actually not bad either for a backup. He's not like a huge drop off. I don't know why that just disappeared. Um, Kent R. Antonsen play, kind of, he's a Norwegian international. Has played, can play a couple different positions. Um, might play him in a wing back role eventually, but right now we're going with fullbacks defensive. Um, let's see. Andrea Morocco is how I'm going to say that Italian youngster, uh, center back. This represents a problem. Um, he is in the first team and, he, and I'm not saying he's bad, but when you look, we, we have four people total that can play central defender and a couple of them. Let's see. Lots of that's not as pretty like he's a midfielder, really. And say and Ziegler, so we get Ziegler, uh, Leifus, and Morocco. We have essentially one sub on the bench for two starters. That's that's not not ideal, you might say. So we got Leifus, it looks quite good. Um, he's in the rotation, he's not actually which, which is interesting to me. You got the youngster here, even though his ratings aren't as good on the heading and the marking and tackling, he is a first teamer versus. Constantantantantantos is more mature, better. Uh, I'm going to use him as a starter, I guess. Uh, and then Ziegler here, again, central defender, not not bad, not bad, not great, not bad, three-star. Uh, we got, and then on the right, in the fullback role, we just signed this guy? Um, like, he signed him and then he left to go to Leipzig. I don't know why. He's playing 20K, he's 33 Ooh, I mean, it looks good. He's got quite, quite good, you know, long throws. Mark. Like he's not terrible, um, but he's he's thirty three. Okay, maybe, maybe, okay. Uh, they've also used in a substitute role, Aligi, um, Albanian international, on the left, primarily on the left side. He's all right. He's twenty seven, and then Felix Pohl is on the right side. Uh, also listed as a first teamer, so that's that's interesting. He's had most of the appearances. He's only played a six five eight though. Not so good. Uh, let's see. Going back to midfielders here, Danny Latza can play pretty much where we need on the field. Prefers the deep line playmaker, advanced play where we play box to box. He his stats look pretty good, minus some of the physicals. Again, being thirty one. This is probably why they want us to to bring in young folk. Yeah, right. Uh, Axel Becker is a youngster, hot prospect on the on the right side. You know, if we were in dominating games or against like really poor teams, we, we might be able to throw him in, get him some game time. That'd be good for the board. 
Um, Mensa prefers ball winning midfielder, defensive midfielder. Again, 19 Ghanaian under, uh, under 20 international. He's got three caps, four goals, which is interesting since he plays defensive midfielder. Stats look quite good. Potential scary good. And he's only at 1.4K for another like three seasons. That's quite tasty. Take that. Alexander Ring, um, midfielder. Again, can play either box uh, midfield center or defensive midfielder. Good stats overall. He's going to start for us. He's a first teamer. Christoph Moritz. Moritz is another midfielder that can play defensive midfielder or central midfield. Um, he's a rotation player. Not as good. Physicals are a little sketchy. Again, being 31, old team. Shipnovsky is on the right side. He's already told me he wants a chance in the first team. And I told him, like, chill out, mate. I literally just got here. I, I, I just got off the plane from Turkey. Or, or maybe I drove over from Poland. Yeah, so I flew home to Poland, got the Volvo, kids, wife, dog, stuff, you know, and we, we just drove down to uh, Kaiserslautern, um, which is in the southwest of Germany, if, in case you're interested, because I looked it up. Um, but he can kind of play wherever, prefers this attacking midfielder right. Not sure if we're going to play a 4-2-3-1, but he could be an option there. Nikolai Dovadan. It had some under-21 caps for Austria, but nothing since then. Again, he's all right playing on the left-hand side in a, in a winger-type role. That's okay. Um, one of our best players here, 10 million pounds, uh, Vladislav Kalatvdinstev. He's Ukrainian. One cap internationally, 10 under-21 caps. Look at all the green. And he can kind of play in a bunch of different roles, so he's Handy to have around for another three seasons. Four star. Kind of like him. David Ellers is on loan from Dortmund. Dortmund plays in a winger role. Um, he's played a bunch this season. Six, no one's really played phenomenally. We'll look at the overall ratings here in a minute. Asayaman Asue. He's English. Wasn't expecting that. He's on loan at Ingolstadt. Uh, who, yes, have been relegated to the the second Bundesliga or the Bundesliga 2. I actually don't know what it is. Um, looks pretty good, but 27. I don't know if he's ever going to feature for us, so we might leave him there. Have a good day, sir. Eric uh, Vekesser, uh, a young player, 23. No youth caps, no international experience. Not really got a lot going on from potential abilities. Only played in... Made six appearances total, five of them as substitutes. He's all right. He's not a, he's not a world beater. Um, Hani Mukhtar, Sudanese, 27 caps, one goal. One of our key players, valued at three million. Three and a half star, isn't likely to improve, but has lots of tasty green numbers. Can kind of play in either the midfield or the attacking midfield in the middle of the pitch. Pablo Perez is Spanish. Again, got him loaned out, 1.6 million. I mean, he's got some good stuff going on. We might be able to use him next year, but his physicals aren't fantastic, so we're going to leave things as they are. Federico Andrada, Argentinian, good potential, three and a half star. Uh, he's kind of our substitute. Like, uh, if we get a striker that gets tired, he can come in. Uh, Fabio Amato just joined the club. He was signed. 16-year-old hot prospect, five-star potential ability. He's 16. Needs to work on his strength. So let's just... But if you if you want to see that he looked quite good, yeah, you might go back and look at that. Marcus Thurum, first-teamer, has scored 10 goals in 14 games, 14 starts, and then another two substitute appearances. I've never had a player that could play complete forward. He looks incredible. He's 23. He's on contract for another two years looks quite good and then casper oh boy pris i uh, pris bilko sure three and a half star he scored six times in uh in the league this season 17 appearances he started every single game 675 rating not bad not terrible more of a target man but he can kind of play a bunch of different roles good aggression and bravery for a defensive forward um that's our starting, uh, or our first squad. First team, that's the word that I'm looking for. Under-19s, we got some good things going on here, some good good potentials. I'll eventually show those to you. Same thing down here in uh, 
the the second team again never had never (laughs) never had a a, yeah team that's what it's called a club with a second team but some scary good potential sitting there in the second team with that we just need to develop look at those ages 16 years old that is crazy talking we got some 15 year olds back on the under 19s from a tactical perspective um i'm thinking 442 because I want to use both of those those good strikers that have played all season. I'm trying not to rock the boat too much, right? You're in 10th place. You've gotten here playing a 4-4-2 primarily with a little bit of 4-2-3-1 thrown in. Let's not rock the boat. Like, I don't have time to go find signings. Let's leave it as is. Problem is, we're playing Bayern Munich. Yeah. So, we're going to go more defensive. 4-4-1. Or 4 1 4 1, I should say, and it's like 4 1 at the top, right? So we're putting him in a defensive forward because I'm trying not to have too much of a gap between the attackers and the midfield. That's probably wrong, but it's just like, it's more of like lose and don't lose like 9 0 is how I'm feeling about Bayern Munich because they are crazy good. They have lost once this season. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. Um, so if we could squeeze a draw that'd be amazing if we only lose by one that's actually okay because that's not going to drop us a spot and i'm just trying to keep our goal differential respectable so that's what's going on there um the the staff that's here still looks pretty good i mean look at all these stats it's so much green like i'm a little out of my league here really right you hired a guy making a thousand a week you're paying him eight thousand a week that's gonna happen the coaches look good. Head of youth development's 18, working with the youngsters at 14 and 16. Like, quite good. Quite, quite, quite amazingly good, right? Um, facilities, excellent training facilities, superb youth facilities, good junior coaching, above average youth recruitment, capacity 47,000. Just absolutely crazy. We actually don't own the stadium. Club um, back in the 2000s got into like some financial trouble. They actually had to sell the stadium. Uh, to the city council, I believe, something like that. And they're now renting it back. So, yeah, owned by the council, um, rebuilt in 2004. So they got into some f- financial iffiness, and that's what's happened there. As you can see, kind of gone up and down. So they got probably down in here is where they ended up selling the stadium, came back, bounced down, up, down, up, and then here we are. So they're actually one of the oldest clubs in the Bundesliga formed in 1900 kind of over the years merging clubs here and there they've won it four times um primarily hold on can i find the landmarks nope that's not what i'm looking for all right so they won it in 1991 they won it again in the 50s i just cut a whole bunch of stuff out as i clicked around looking for this and i can't find it so you know it's fine that's it, yeah it's fine we don't we don't need to find that um let me know what you think. I, I think this is worth a bunch of likes. Like, I'd like to see if we could get something st- like stupid crazy, like 15 likes on here. Um, subscribe if you're new. When we come back in the next episode, we're going to play, God help us, Bayern Munich, and then 12th place, Augsburg. So hopefully we can get a draw and a win. That four points out of, the, out of that sequence would be absolutely insane, although it's probably, at best, going to be three points. But positivity, right? Yeah. All right. So subscribe button's going to be up there. Thanks for watching. Smash a like on there. We've moved to Germany.